Hi folks, hope you're all okay and staying safe. Uh, difficult, very scary times at the moment. Um, you know, having to stay at home and isolate and try and reduce the, uh, the spread of this virus. It's pretty scary stuff and I really just hope it passes very soon. So, um, but one thing it does, it enables me to spend some time behind the camera and hopefully provide some tutorials for you all. Um, on Instagram the other day I posted a number of tube flies that I tie up in different colours and I asked you which, which colour you wanted. Um, we had the headlight, uh, we had the rusty colour, and we had the frosty uh, and the, the rust colour by far by far one which I was quite surprised about. I thought perhaps people would want the, uh, the headlight a little bit more but maybe I'll save that for another fly that I tie at a later date. Uh, this one's slightly different <clears throat> To the uh, to the tail flies that I usually show, um, but I've been fishing a fair bit this winter before the lockdown, and um, the tail attachment is attached to the tube rather than on the hook, and it just makes things a little bit easier for me. Um, and as you know, I tend to tend to fish weedless flies a fair bit, um, so I don't have to tie the the mono tail loop to the to the rig itself. I can. Uh, remove one step of when I'm tying these rigs up. So it just makes it a little bit more versatile for me um, Maybe for you if you tie them um, Great little great little flies uh, Without sounding big headed, but they are really good if you tie them weedless and if you've got lots of snags in your river uh, I've said it before I've got I, I haven't lost one of these yet and I get really good hookups with that hook further back But the key the key with the A-Rex hooks at the moment I should say uh, is you need to bend them um, there are other models out there, a number of others. Um, Decoy Worm 18 is another one to try. Uh, so give that one a go. Um, I think somebody mentioned on Facebook there's an Italian maker somewhere, I can't remember the name. Um, yeah. But as I said, at the moment I'm bending these A-Rex hooks. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens in the future. Uh, anyway, without me going on, let's uh, let's start time. Okay, in the the uh, tube needle, we've got a 4.8 millimeter soft tube. And we need these tubes quite soft to allow the, the shank to fit through uh, after you've tied the fly. If they're hard tubes, they're very difficult to get in and out. So softer tubes are better for this. Um, and you, as you need a little bit of, um, a little bit of give when, when the eye goes in. It keeps it locked in place better then. So I've just waxed the thread because um, I'm using GSP 100. 150 is fine as well or 200. It's really up to you. Um, you need a fairly strong thread because we're going to be using bucktail. Now I'm going to start in the middle of the fly. Just lay a, a thread base down. You want to come all the way to the end of the tube because we need to attach the mono tail link. I'll leave around five mil, six mil at the end to allow that tube to flex for when you insert the hook. That should do. Now for, um, for the tail attachment, I don't tend to use wire because I don't really like using stingers. So I'm using, um, what is this, 60 pound monofilament. I'm just going to take a, a piece of that. I'm going to measure up against a fly that I've already tied to make sure I get the right amount. And what I tend to do is get some beads because I need to form a loop. I'll use red beads. These are five mil, five mil beads. I get these off eBay. I get a thousand in there, and they're dirt cheap. Uh, these are fluorescent ones. They glow in the dark as well. Um, but they fit fit the 60 pound mono perfectly, so the loop stays locked. If you know what I mean, that the bead doesn't slip. So let's put that on there. It's a little bit fiddly, and they are a bit difficult to get in. Sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. So you just have to 
take your time that's the first one and about to do the second this one's a bit more difficult it will not go in here we go we go. So two beads. The reason we use two beads is we need um, a bead to lock around the, if you're going to fish weedless, to lock around the hook to keep it in place. So before we um, tie the, the, the Maya tail loop in, we just want to make sure that we flatten this on the filament so it doesn't roll around the tube. That looks about right. I'm just going to measure it one more time to make sure I've got the right distance. So it needs to be here. I'll tie that down really tight. And what I like to do now as well is add a little bit of glue. You can zap a gap, use liquid fusion. So I'm a bit, um, I tend to react to the stronger glues, so I can't use them. Add some, some glue down, and then we're going to start wrapping around this, this tail. That's a little bit long, so I'm just going to take the ends off that because we need to slot on a cone in a second okay that's pretty secure well, that's not going anywhere okay next we need to um, well we don't this is completely optional but it's nice to have a little bit of dub or you could put some tie some flash around this this piece because we're not actually tying on this piece but we you know to make it look nice so we'll, we'll add some some dubbing this is just vineyard glister dub so wrap that round doesn't matter if it's untidy let's just check this out against the uh, template so that's pretty good what I'm going to do, I'm just going to build up a bit of a dump, a dump, a bump. So this, what this does, it keeps the cone in place. There we go. Messy old stuff. So we're just going to um, wait finish. I'll add some more glue. Just to keep everything in place. Now the cones I'm using are from Pro Sport Fisher. Okay, these are um, 12 millimeter. They're for the Predator tubes. I really like these. They just add a little bit, they're not too heavy, but they add a bit of weight. I mean, tubes tend to be a little bit lightweight. So you do sort of need to work a bit of weight to um, to sink them a little. A little. I mean, you could keel weight down the bottom here, um, or you could add a cone like I'm doing. Um, there's also weight. The rigs that I tie them on a rig. There's also weight on the shank, so it, it does sink them better. The conventional style. Just make sure that is good. I think we're good there in terms of placement. Yeah, pretty much the same. It's not an exact science. I mean, the fly behave differently depends on where you put this cone. Sometimes I put it at the front. If you saw the deep dive tutorial, um, which was one of my recent ones, you can the uh, the the cone is at the front because I want them to dive quite deep and sink head first. So what we're going to do to keep that cone in place, we're just going to build up a little dam in front of it. 
Don't need much like that, just to keep it solid. Okay, next we're going to add some bucktail. Obviously, putting that cone in there as well, um, it supports the bucktail. So you, you have a slightly wider profile fly because bucktail does have a tendency over time to um, flatten out. Um, <clears throat> you probably saw Nick Barrow do it actually with his um, magic heads not so long ago. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a trick that a lot of us use. Um, uh, see that uh, body tubing as well, you can do it. But I'm not really a fan of it. I don't know why, I just I struggle with it. But I have, there is a video on my channel, 10 minute tie, 10 minute tube, it's got it in there. Uh, using synthetics, but I do prefer the Bucks Hell flies. Okay, so we want, I might take a bit more actually. We need some tan bucktail. Um, I'm taking this from the middle because it's slightly stiffer. But each bucktail is different. So you, you be the judge, but you want a fairly stiffish material because you want that bucktail to support the flash. And be quite generous with it as well. I'm just going to tidy those ends up. So they won't come to about here. I'm just going to tie that down. Just wrap over the top without catching myself. And just bring that forward. A couple more loose wraps. Adjust the tension of my bobbin. And just use your thumb to push it round. We're not going all the way around because we're going to add some white to the belly. Want to come pretty much down this each side and, and on the top. Now we're going to use some white bucktail for the belly, slightly less this time. Again, as with bucktail, you take the uh, the under, short under furs out. And just spin your got rotary just spin it round there we go just make sure that's covered all the way around the tube now hold those butts tight as you can and then pull tight here we go Can hear some background noise, some kitty screaming. It's my next door neighbour. I did try to get up early to avoid all the screaming, but um, unfortunately that's not happened. Oh well. Now use your push tool to push that bucktail back. I think it must be breakfast next door. There we go. So you can tie over the top. You don't need to build a dam there because you've got the, the cone to support the bucktail. And that keeps it a bit more secure as well. Now come forward with your thread. So next we're going to use Magnum Flashaboo. Mix of a little bit of Polar Flash. Now I've got silver. Um, I've got silver and gold here. So I've already done this in the interest of time. So I'm just tapering this up now to make sure that the flash is all tapered. There's no straight lines in there. There we go. I want to go 60-40. I don't come far too far past the uh, the tail attachment because you don't want that flash to interfere with the tails that we attach later. Wrap that down. And we're going to put some just polar flash, silver polar flash on the underbelly. Give it a taper. Not too much flash in these flies, but a little bit. Probably a bit more than I actually use normally, but it really depends on what I'm tying. There we go, just wrap that round. I mean, you could 
create a dubbing loop and spin it around but you, you won't be able to separate the colours out then so I prefer to do it this way and use your push tool to push that flash back making sure there's a good even spread all the way around that looks pretty good to me and come over the top bring your thread forward about a centimetre clip that down to make sure it doesn't go anywhere add some glue over the flash so it doesn't slip it's slippery stuff so you need to you always need to add some sort of glue around it we'll go over those thread wraps as well make sure we've got a nice durable fly Be like that. Right, for the next bucktail tie, we're going to use um, a colour called, I think it's called amber. So, um, again, we're going to take from the middle a generous amount. We want fairly stiff hairs because we want that bucktail to, to stay where it's supposed to stay. If you take it too near the base, there's so much air in it you don't really get the strength of the stiffness you just need to be mindful of when you're selecting the bucktail of what you use from where so we're going to take I'm not so worried about much worried about tapering this fly of the bucktail but we probably need about three inches again we tie that down a few loose wraps over the top and we'll go with white again Generous amount. These aren't really sparse flies, so they're designed to be bulky to push the, um, to create the disturbance to put the, move the tails at the back end. So you want to you want a bit of bulk in them. Just tidy up those ends and spin your spin your vice around and. Use wraps and then just spread that bucktail all the way around like that, making sure it's evenly distributed. And then hold those butts and then pull tight. Don't pull too tight. If you pull too tight, you'll end up squashing the tube and you'll never get the, the hooks through. But you need to give it enough tension. Now, something I don't usually do, I don't usually tidy those ends up, but I'm going to make them, make them nice and neat. There we go. A little bit of glue, just to make sure that's secure. Now we're going to hollow tie this one. There we go, so that's fairly stiff. And just press down just to get that buck tail to, to go where you want it to go. Now we need to probably build up fairly big dam on this one. Give it, give it plenty of thread. So you want a bit more yet? It's quite a wild fly, but just remember when you see, once you've put the more flash and, and some night over the top of it, it will, it will lay down. So don't overdo it. There we go, that will do. All right, next we're going to go for the Magnum Flashaboo again. A mix of gold, silver, and a bit of gold um, polar in there as well. Yeah, just like clockwork, the cats come for the cat flap again. She always does this. She comes in, she feeds, she goes back out. So it's cat's life. So make sure that's evenly distributed, like so. And we're going to add 
some polar to the base. Like that. Just gonna use our push tool to push that back. And then tie down. Come forward. There we go. Nice bulk, bulky prof, profile. So let's just use a clip to tie back. Now I've already pre prepared the knots. I've not actually blended this with any flash this time. I'm just going to go for some different colours. Now I've got black, I've got yellow, and I've got orange. So for the, we're going to tie this on in two phases. But first, I need to add some glue. We're just going to build up that head. Now it's up to you. Could you? Could even leave it like this and fishy like this but in order to, i like to put an eye on the fly sometime and you know if you you need something to attach to glue them to and now it's a good material for that and plus it's very 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 durable so we're going to go for quite a long piece first so this one is going to come pretty much i've got a cat sniffing around my leg i think she's going to bite me in a minute <laughs> She's got food. She doesn't need to come and sniff my leg. It's usually a sign that she wants feeding. <laughs> so that's the black on top. Spin it round, we're gonna add some yellow. Not quite as long, slightly shorter. We want it to cover the, the underside of the fly a little bit. Tie that down. Like that, and then we're going to use our push tool. I can get this black to separate from the yellow. It's misbehaving. There we go. It's pretty much there's a few bits of yellow stuck in there, but we're not too worried about that. There we go. Push that back over the top. I come forward. Just give it a brush. Brush out any knots, making sure it's distributed properly. And then we're gonna come over with another short piece of black. Just lay some glue down quickly. There we go. Make sure everything is secure and won't pull out. It does have a tendency sometimes night to pull out if you don't go tight enough. I've had that happen a few times, especially when you catch jacks. They seem to really make a mess of your flies. There we go. So we're going to go for one more, slightly shorter. Make sure you've got good coverage. Just hold those ends and just take some of these knots out. We're right, we'll removing the material. And underneath that, we're gonna put some, some orange, orange nyat. Let's just make sure it's tapered. And we're gonna put that in 6040, like we did with the others. Just to go over the yellow, you know, if you see some of my flies, you know I like a bit of yellow and orange. go. Right, wet finish. And we've got a marker pen. We're just going to colour that black in on top. Colour that in with black, I should say, over the white, just in case it shows through. We'll add some glue to those wraps as well. The underneath could color that in orange but i don't know where my orange mark has gone oh well now we use our push tool i 
Looks about right. Try and get rid of those black ones that have strayed. There we go. What we're going to do is going to fold that back, clip it up. Going to try and separate those, that orange. Make sure it doesn't go where it doesn't need to go. Looks pretty good. Right, the last step, well, second last step, there's some UV work to do, but I don't tend to do that in the videos because I don't think it really needs to be done, is to glue some eyes on. Now, I'm a big fan of tape eyes. I use epoxy eyes as well, um, mostly the Deer ones because they're nice and flat, but these are super flat. I don't know why well, you can see it, but um, they're 10 mil tape eyes. And once you, uh, once you glue them on and just give them a coating of UV, they're really secure and plus they're not heavy at all. Now, I have lost my glue, here it is. Again, like all my other videos, I tend to use serious glue. Other glues, probably just as good, but I find this one good because it's, um, it's uh, solvent free and it doesn't, it doesn't cause me trouble when I'm using it. So I'm gonna uh, put the glue on the eye for these because they're nice and big and I can spread it all the way around and make sure that they're well covered. And well, you can see that. I'm just pressing the eye in. I'm gonna do the same on this side. And that is it. Not quite, actually, it's not quite it because I need to take it take it off without destroying my <laughs> destroying the table. A bit tight on here, so I'm just gonna get it off the, the needle. I'm just gonna put the clip back on. Let's put the lid on my glue as well. I'm on sixes and sevens today. So, some do this, some don't, but I like to just trim the end and just give it a gentle melt. The reason being is it just looks nicer. So we're just gonna take a little bit and get rid of all this fluff. It's a proper fire hazard around here with the lighter. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the end if I can get hold of the thing. Come on. We need bigger scissors for this. Come on. That too, it's fine. The eyes have all moved forward. I'll get there in a minute. Right. Saw it out, Paul. Tying like a amateur. Right, so try and make sure your material's out of the way. A few might catch. You just want to lightly, don't put the flame on the plastic. All right, we're back again. I don't know how much you saw of that, but I just burnt the end. What we, find, what we do at the end is just put some UV, Deer Creek, wherever I've done with it, or some UV of choice, and just go over the eyes around the head just to keep that head nice and nice and solid and durable and then you can attach the tail um, I won't go through attaching the dragon tails I've done this in a number of videos um, look at uh, DT bulkheads it tells you how to do it in there um, and I've gone through the rigs before so I, I won't tie them on a rig again because you're probably sick as the sight of it now but that's what it is um, the, the original version, I did added mono to the hook, um, but it's easier just to add it to the tube. So um, it just makes tiny rigs up a bit quicker, that's all. All right, I hope you enjoyed that, and um, I'll talk to you again. Cheerio.